everyone, and welcome to another week of PR News Live. Uh, I know we took a small siesta last week, so we're happy to be back. And I am Nicole Schumann. I am a reporter for PR News, and I'm here today with Sarah Joseph. She is an, a senior vice president at Berlin Rosen, where she leads the travel and lifestyle practice and business for real estate clients. And today we're going to talk about the reinvention of some of her clients providing fresh, innovative experiences for their audiences. Um, so if you have any questions throughout all this, just pop them into the comments and we'll get to them throughout the chat. So you don't have to wait till then. We'll just roll with it as we go. Um, so hi, Sarah. Thank you so much for coming on. I know time hey, Nicole. has probably <laughs> been a little stressful, but you know. Things have been busy, but super, super glad that they are and, and happy to have time to chat with you today. Great. Well, thank you so much. Um, so for our first segment, uh, I wanted to talk about a story we put out earlier this week. Um, a PR News contributor, David Wolpert, published the piece, How to Shift PR Plans to Succeed at Virtual Events. Um, and in this piece, Wolpert talks about CES, the Consumer Electronics Show, which is pretty huge, even for people that aren't necessarily techies. Um, and their decision to go virtual in January due to COVID challenges. Um, CES is one of the largest, most anticipated trade shows every year in Las Vegas. So it's definitely gonna be different this year, but I think there's some real opportunities here, especially for tech brands who make their living off innovation. So CES, this is where tech companies go to get really noticed and solidify what usually adds up to some pretty meaty press, press coverage, especially if they have a new or innovative or interesting um, product or piece of equipment. Um, so Sarah, you know, you deal with a lot of, you know, openings and, and press coverage. Um, I'd love to hear some of your thoughts on how companies can attract press coverage now at these virtual events that they're doing. Yeah, I think, um, you know, I think when CES announced that they were going to host the conference, there was some trepidation by folks. How would they have such a large gathering? How would they be able to really capitalize and get the return on investment? And now moving virtually like so many have, I think they're still asking those same questions. If we're not going to be on that, you know, conference, uh, you know, center floor and we're not going to have the opportunity to have spokespeople unveil things in the same way, how will they be able to leverage? So I, I think that's top of mind for, for the technology folks at CES, but I think it trickles down all the way to local businesses as well that are engaging with their communities. I think that um, you know John's article was really well written and he talks about using influencers and certainly some of those are, are celebrities. And I think that throughout this whole uh, pandemic, you know, influencers and celebrities have been, um, you know, popular before, they're popular now. I think that brands are using them in different ways, but they still have a lot of value in gaining following and traction and buzz. I think some have even, you know, created their own platforms, More Good News, which John Krasinski was one of my favorites. But I think at, at the, the heart and core of it is that um, as people rethink what they're doing for events, there's going to be virtual components. It gives people the flexibility that they need as they're juggling their day-to-day -day work and childcare and other things. It'll give them the opportunity to not miss an event, but be able to participate in it ongoing. And what we've seen you know, virtually with a lot of our clients very early on in all of this was how do you keep people engaged with your brand or you know your location when they can't physically go there um, and and press that that has resulted has been significant as well Brookfield Place came out very early with their Brookfield at Home program with the mix was which was a mix of art and culture and entertainment and we had coverage from the New York Times and Vogue all the way down through more of the local, you know, Time Out New York's and Thrillists of, of the world. Um, other, you know, art and culture organizations, 92nd Street Y quickly moved online as well. And they were able to charge people a donation of their choice to continue to raise funds 
while also tuning in for program and that worked really well for them. And then there were um, interesting alliances that came along. The other day I got invited to a wine tasting event, which is then going to have a Bon Jovi concert streaming after it. So I think that um, I think that the brands are getting creative. Um, you know, Equinox and Peloton as well moved quickly to free trials or free classes altogether. And I think that you're going to see more and more of that continue. I think people um, will never not want to be back in person and being able to network and shake hands. But the flexibility to engage with brands and, you know, keep some of that programming and entertainment and cultural experience alive within their new schedules uh, will continue for sure. Yeah, I think Peloton is such an interesting story because they were shamed back in December for their commercials. And then yep. they really emerged as one of the brands that have won throughout all this. I think every day I see someone new getting a Peloton on Facebook. Um, <laughs> very lucky. Um, so even for and that, there's a wait list. I, I think it's six weeks to two months now to get your Peloton delivered. So they did a very quick 180 for sure. Yeah, and it should be interesting too. I wonder if they'll be a part of CES at all. I mean, they are a, a part of their technology in a way. So who knows? Maybe instead of just bikes, we'll see. I don't know something else coming out from them eventually. Who knows? Um, but yeah, I, I want to touch a little bit. You mentioned influencers, and I know our audience is always interested in influencers, and I think a lot of people are confused right now on what exactly to do with them during this mm -hmm. time. Um, and they're a big part of CES, especially because they go to the show, um, companies showcasing invite them to, you know, different launches and give them different products. And that really was a way for a lot of companies to get press. Now, I know you mentioned Brookfield Place, um, for mm -hmm. those of us that aren't in the New York area. Um, if you want to explain a little bit more about Brookfield Place, did you guys work with influencers at all um, on that campaign or... You know, just just uh, if you have any instances of some of the different things they did. Yeah. Um, so Brookfield Place is um, downtown in Lower Manhattan. It is an indoor shopping, dining, um, you know, venue which has office space above it, and it's got a indoor and outdoor, um, you know, sort of platform where they bring shows and experiences to life year round. So in the winter, you've got ice skating rinks and, and, and things like that to enjoy, um, as well as movie series and art installations and beer tastings. Um, there, there's really something going on every day. And I think where a lot of their experiences started was noting that retail had become very competitive and so to draw people into stores and restaurants and businesses, there was an experiential side of things that needed to sort of come alive, you know, come to life. And the program took off and um, really on our side of the friends from, from PR to have influencers participate and to have press come and participate, the events became even larger than life. Um, they also actually own the North Cove Sailing Arena. And so last summer we did a lot of publicity for them on, on the sailing front and we had full press, um, you know, sampling that and influencers as well. So for those that hadn't had the opportunity to be there or for those that weren't able to participate in person, if they were following some of their favorite journalists or influencers, they were able to have the experience, um, you know, while they were at home or check it out before they decided to come down and participate themselves. That's great. Yeah, I know uh, you had Hilton on a couple of weeks ago and they talked about releasing the double treat cookie recipe, which oh. <laughs> I thought was so great. Um, and it really yes. allows people at home to participate. No, you know, that's true. And, and we actually work with Hilton. We represent Waldorf Astoria, New York. And uh, I personally did make the double tree cookie recipe twice 
and I can say they're the best cookies I've ever made. I, and I have had a friends now making them and I keep sending my client photos. Um, but, but talking about influencers, um, when, when the Waldorf Astoria residential sales gallery opened before all of this, you know, we had kicked off those residential sales, but now everything is being done online and to just help create more buzz and get people, you know, still engaged while they're at home. We partnered with God's Love We Deliver and we had culinary influencers making some of the very famous recipes that came out of Waldorf. So we had the Waldorf salad, we had the Rob Roy cocktail, red velvet cake, and we had folks with really nice followings on Instagram making their versions of those famous recipes. And then people were able to donate to God's Love We Deliver the value of a meal. It was sort of like, you know, a night out, um, you know, a dinner out, but virtually held. And it was very successful, but folks that may not have been engaged with Waldorf Astoria in New York, certainly that followed those influencers, you know, were exposed to it as well as those who follow God's Love We Deliver. So I think there's been a lot of interesting pairing of companies um, and, and synergies am among companies. We're actually um, getting ready to do another one this fall which I can't talk about quite yet, but it will be something similar with a really well-known organization and some influencers bringing some of their food and beverage concepts to life. That's great. Um, and I, I guess this will just roll into what we were planning and talking about today. Um, you know, clients being able to reinvent themselves during this pandemic to inspire and encourage consumers and the audience during this time. Um, yeah, I remember, um, were you guys involved with Eleven Medicine Park? Um, so we were. Um, they weren't a, cl a client of ours, but we work with Rethink Food, okay. and it's a fabulous organization. They, you know, we all eat out at restaurants and think about the fact that there's probably food that isn't being served, or you know, it is is about to go bad, and and you don't want to waste it. And Rethink Food. Um, came along and really took all of the extra good food that was left from restaurants and was donating it to those in need. During this time, they had all the relationships with restaurants, um, but but they were closed or, um, you know, closed to outside of just outdoor dining. And so they quickly re reconfigured. They partnered with Daniel Hum and 11 Madison Park. They turned into a commissary uh, where you know first responders and those in need could get get meals and and quickly figured out how to kind of reinvent their business and a lot of a lot of our clients and, and others did as well. Um, SL Green partnered with Daniel Balud to launch Food First, which similarly creates food for first responders and those in need. We worked with Audible and they had a partnership with New World Kitchen that dove into Newark where they're they're based um, to help their local community out as well. So I think I think a lot of folks were were looking at how to quickly shift gears and use contacts and dive in and help and and quite frankly keep people employed and, and business moving forward. That's awesome. Yeah. And um, I know before you mentioned the Waldorf sale and I do remember seeing plenty of articles surrounding that. So that was a real um, a really good experience to, to be able to bring that forward. And um, yeah, yeah. I mean, on, on our side of the fence, I will say we've been um, working, you know, with a tremendous amount of press for our clients. And I think it's been interesting, especially in the food and beverage sector for those that were doing more reviews or talking about events or new menus or where to go. Um, a lot of them shifted gears and really dove in and, and talked about the human interest side of restaurants, restaurant workers, and how to, you know, band together as a community and, and keep things afloat. Um, you know, there's a lot of restaurants that are still closed now, and I think people are looking at how to get creative in keeping, uh, you know, restaurants super busy or, or being able to put packages together for people to cook at home. Um, I know one of my favorites locally, The Smith, is doing a lot of home packages and it's been kind of fun to get to still eat my favorite foods, but also learn how to cook at the same time. I wish they delivered to my neighborhood. <laughs> well, 
<laughs> no, but I, I even on uh, platforms like Gold Belly, I mean, they've really uh, you know stepped up during all this. Um, people in places that you know I I didn't think I'd ever heard of Gold Belly were ordering you know food packages, like you said, like from Cass's Deli or you know just famous places from all over the country. So I think it's pretty interesting to see how these brands have uh, come up with some new ideas and and maybe even gotten a broader audience a broader base so i think that's been a, a good twist from all of this i agree and um, even last sunday um we don't work with with danny meyer um well we work with him in different capacities uh you know we did the opening of his restaurant at domino um, park when it opened we don't represent him in and of himself but um he uh was on cbs sunday morning talking about the industry last week and they, as a hospitality group, have been doing six bottles of wine delivered um, to people's homes, all from different regions. So every so often they launch a new set. And it's if you think about it, it's smart. They've bought out vintages from, from vineyards and they're sitting on cellars. And this way, it's a way to keep business moving forward and get creative and have some fun and people can enjoy it at their home. And then when restaurants are able to open at full capacity, they can once again go and enjoy them at the restaurant themselves. Yeah, it's like going on a wine tour without leaving your house. I know, I like it. <laughs> I would love that. Um, I know when we talked before, uh, I know you mentioned one of your hotel clients also doing um, something very smart and innovative to kind of entice those working from home with a change of scenery. So I was talking, maybe you could talk a little bit more about that. Yeah, um, I have to say that uh, working with hotels has always been one of my passions and over 20 years in the industry have had the opportunity to work with global brands as well as individual properties. And I think hotel EAs get very creative in their programming. And I think during this time, there's been no shortage of that either. Um, and and a, a lot of it, hopefully you've, you've all read about it in the press, but um, Wyeth Hotel, which is the original boutique out in Williamsburg and, and kind of defines that neighborhood from a hospitality perspective and was a local favorite at first. And then of course, welcomed guests from all over the world when this all happened, you know, people are staying close to home and we've all been working from home for several months and people are kind of itching for a change in scenery. So they recently partnered with Industrious and created a work from hotel program. And so right now people are able to go rent rooms for the day that have been redesigned to serve as an office space. And um, it's gotten tremendous amount of press but also locals that, that have been kind of stuck in smaller apartments are loving the change of scenery and La Crocodile, which is the restaurant that's reopened for outdoor dining, you know, is kind of the best hotspot in town to go eat after a long work of, a long day of work in the hotel. Sounds awesome. And if I can maybe sit poolside somewhere and work, <laughs> I think I would really enjoy it right now. <laughs> yeah, I, I know that um, the William Vale around the corner that, that has a pool is finding their reservations are, are booked and there's no shortage of, um, you know, sort of outdoor spaces. I think companies that are, or locations that have gotten really creative had, have done fun things. Um, Pier 17 in South Street Seaport, which is in Lower Manhattan, um, recently launched movie nights and they've taken their space and divided them into small um, sort of garden spaces with two seats each and they're doing movie it. screenings. Yeah, it looks awesome. And they said they have Wi-Fi. So if you really wanted to just take the day, you could. Yeah. And, and even, you know, back to another program um, that Wyeth is doing, they have um, like private screening nights. So if you book the hotel package for three nights, two to four guests within the same party uh, will have the full run of the private screening room, popcorn included, of course, but they can watch you know, any of their favorite TV shows or a movie and you get to have the entire screening room to yourself. And I think 
there's gonna be a shift into smaller, more intimate events while all of this continues. And I think a focus on you know quality time and really being able to be comfortable and enjoy yourself in the surrounding that you are. I think a lot of companies are looking at how to do smaller events. I know Wyeth as well has a fantastic rooftop and they um, have already launched small, more intimate private weddings. So folks that had to move their big bashes to later dates are still wanting to get married with family and closest friends. And there's a lot of spaces now that you can do that in, in a very well thought out um, and celebratory way. So I, I think they're they're doing it right. And, and they're certainly a leader in how to continue to keep people coming back and enjoying the property in different ways than they did before. That's awesome. And, and correct me if I'm wrong, but usually these clients of yours um, probably garner press mostly from, you know, the industries they serve and travel and, um, you know, just influencers and those types. Um, but I feel like with the changes that they're making, are you guys getting press attention from maybe different uh, areas that you wouldn't before? Um, you know, say business or even health or, or those sorts of things? Yeah, I mean, we certainly do a lot of, um, you know, corporate positioning and thought leadership and we, wherever possible, put our CEOs or chefs or, you know, head of certain business streams, um, you know, onto business shows and, and that's a priority. I think our team always looks at um, any sort of event or new program as an opportunity to gain as much exposure across verticals as possible. I think we do that regularly, but um, the current media environment and also shrinking newsrooms that, um, you know, put reporters on new beats or multiple beats we're able to be really flexible in what sections that we're, we're gaining press in. And there's so many new columns that are popping up as well, um, you know, during all of this. Certainly the traditional travel writers are shifting gears and went from armchair escapes into the future of travel and, and a lot of local travel. Um, was, was listening to a, an, an interview with um, the head of comms for Airbnb who was talking about the rising trend of family travel for them and how um, family travel is 60% up and within 300 miles of the home. So obviously less people are flying at the moment and more people are still looking to move around as best that they can and get to the beach or get up into the mountains and do some hiking and enjoy some of that summertime fun. And they're seeing a lot of families do that together and taking a little bit longer road trips than they normally would to enjoy some of you know the summer break and, and summer vacation. Yeah, we actually also, um, it's kind of fun, we work with a hotel uh, called Bento Living. It's brand new and it opened in the midst of all of this really, um, but they are set up more like apartments. They're a longer stay um, you know, offering and so, they've done a lot of relocation incentives. So for folks that were looking to maybe rent a home for a month to change location while you get this work from home opportunity, they did um, you know, a relocation offering and it's another version of that work from hotel concept that um, has worked quite well for them. That's awesome. I, yeah. I'm curious, I'm gonna have to ask around and see if anyone's taking advantage of this because I think <laughs> I'm intrigued. So. Maybe I'll I'll try it out and let you guys know how it works for me. Um, yeah. The only problem is I don't know if I could bring my cat with me and he might be upset. There's I, a lot of pet friendly properties out there. <laughs> I think I think you can find one if you want to. But I think what has been encouraging about all of this, having spent so much time focused on the travel industry itself, is that um, you know, it's gonna be a little bit of a long game, but I think no one at any company doubts that the moment there is a vaccine or we move past this in a little bit um, of a better way, the, the desire to travel um, is key. And I think that, you know, Europe is seeing really strong bookings already for next summer. I think people feel confident that 
they'll be back in the skies and, and taking longer haul trips at that point in time. Um, so I, I think it's a challenging time for the industry. I think we've seen other challenges as well. And um, there's definitely special people that, that work in that. And I think travel is one of those things that while you can't do it maybe today, or it's got to be closer to home today, it's certainly going to be an industry that comes back and comes back with a vengeance for sure. Oh yeah, and planning is always part of the fun to travel, so. <laughs> That's true. Get those plans ready for it when we get the okay and we can head out. So, uh, but thank you so much, we're out of time. Um, okay, but that went by quickly. <laughs> fast but we appreciate you having you on sarah and and taking the time i know you guys are busy um but before we go i just want to let you guys know about a great free live event that we're doing on august 18th uh for those pr and comms folks who may feel a bit stretched on resources right now it's called how to do more with less a holistic, a holistic approach to pr and you can find it at prnewsonline.com under webinars. I'll be hosting with some great guests. And uh, especially too, if you're a, a, a solo PR person or if you're just an army of one in your department, uh, this should be a great webinar for you to attend and learn some tricks on how to, uh, how to relieve yourself from all the stress you have going on. Um, but yeah, stay well, Sarah, stay safe. Try to enjoy some of the summer. And thank you all for joining us. Everybody stay well, and we'll see you next Wednesday. All right. Bye, Nicole. Thanks for having me.